first want to show you what I bring every time that I'm sewing. So I have my little sewing bag here and I fit a small pair of scissors in there. In here I have, I actually didn't really bring that much with me this time, black and white thread, measuring tape, pins, and hand sewing needles. What I would usually have in this, in this case would be elastic as well. And now the haul. So I went to the market and I got some silk. Fabric was 85 dirham, at the same price as it is in East London. It's very pretty silk. This is the stuff I'm excited about. I can never find good lace. This lace is from Thailand and it's, oh my God, it's so pretty. It's a little off-white, which I think goes really well with the black. And then this is the black lace. I love it. Some elastic as well, $3.99. No, no way. In dirham. I've got my silk, which I love. I've got my lace, which I love more. With this and my ironing board, I'm gonna try and make. It's gonna be like this with this trim. So before I start the project, it's important to write out a list and it, even if it's something small like this, I just feel like it's nice to break down what it is that you're doing. Make sure I have all my fabric, which I use my sketchbook to like look and see and make sure that I have everything. Iron, place pins, cut fabric, French seam, hem the top, insert the elastic, and then figure out lace. Okay. I hate ironing fabric. It's my least favorite thing to do, but unfortunately, it's probably like half the process. Iron your fabric properly. You can trick people into thinking you're better at sewing than you actually are, which is kind of the goal. Like, doesn't feel like it's on. Don't, don't touch it. Okay, it's working. It's not specifically wrinkly, this fabric. Actually, now thinking back, the guy said it doesn't wrinkle, which sort of doesn't really make sense. I remember him specifically like crunching the fabric and telling me that the fabric doesn't wrinkle. So I think the main thing that I'm gonna struggle with, I didn't bring any shorts and I have to find something that I'm gonna be able to make a pattern with. Okay, maybe these leggings? There is stretch in them, but I'm, st I'm just gonna have to add extra fabric. Which is not ideal. The reason that that's not ideal is because the fabric has to go tighter at the waist, but it has no stretch to it. So I have to make sure that even the part that goes in at the waist is gonna be bigger than my hips. And that's why this is gonna be kind of confusing because this opening of these pants isn't necessarily bigger than my widest part because it stretches. We're doing it on the bias. I'm gonna use my measuring tape to measure the biggest part of my waist. I wanna make sure that my shorts are gonna fit around that. So this is 85 centimeters. I wanna divide that kind of by four. Let's do 20, 20, 25, 25. Plus my seam allowance. Sewing with silk, an absolute nightmare. Preparing your silk makes a huge difference and one of those things is using the right pins. And all those numbers that I said earlier, I absolutely should have written down because I'm gonna forget. You wanna make sure that your fabric's laying flat, again, because it's on the bias, it can really move. But that's how she goes. The difference between cutting on the bias and cutting just normally. On the bias means on the diagonals. Hold your fabric like this, there's no stretch to it at all. And then you hold it on the diagonal and if you pull fabric that doesn't even have stretch to it is gonna help stretch. It's not a very forgiving fabric that we're using, silk cut on the bias, but it's a very forgiving garment. I'm banking on it fitting because it's a pajama short. Front pattern piece is being placed down and I'm gonna cut my back pattern piece. Remembering this bit has to be bigger. The butt has to be a little longer than in the front. The side seams need to match up, like where it's gonna meet at the crotch needs to match up. I haven't sewn shorts in probably three years. Anything that I'm saying right now is based off of actually not knowing how to do it. So this is what I just cut, and then I'm gonna pin them together. And then I can kinda of try them on, I think, too. Like, once I have them pinned, I also always get so confused how to pin shorts or pants. Wrong side together to the side seam, okay, front side seam, wrong side together of your front, of your back side seam. Back side seam, wrong side together with the front side seam. It seems confusing. It is confusing, it seems wrong. Okay, these might be absolutely huge. Okay, but no, wait, these are gonna be with an elastic placed in. No, I think it's gonna be good. I think we're getting close. Take the elastic and tie it around. When it's gathered, 
you can tell what it's gonna look like. Actually, wait, I thought they were way too big, but with this gathered like that, you can see like, look like, and I actually think that's kind of cute. You sort of want them like a little loose, right? Because I don't have any way of finishing my fabric. I have no serger and I have no zigs, like I have no machine, obviously. I'm gonna French seam, which I think, I mean, I'm gonna have to sew everything twice, but I still think it'll be easier to have my finished edges be a French seam. Trim away and you wanna leave as little fabric as you can. You're gonna flip the fabric inside out and then you're gonna iron that seam, pin down and restitch. By flipping this, your raw edges are now on the outside but they're gonna be encased by your new stitch. So I'm gonna French seam my garment and then I'm gonna hem the top and then I can insert my elastic. The last bit is gonna be, before the lacing obviously, it's gonna be just creating a little channel that's gonna be able to encase the elastic. So it just has to have enough fabric at the top, account for the seam allowance, and then fold over the elastic. I did all the seams and you can see now what they look like here. They're all tucked away. There's no raw edges anymore. I left open a little here. So there's this, this little bit's open and I can just put my elastic through, sew up my elastic, and then it's just the lace. The one thing I don't know about doing here is I don't have shearing scissors, I think that's what they're called, the ones with the little zigzag. So with silk, often if you're gonna be attaching lace, because then the fabric's not gonna fray, so I think my worry is, is if I don't have those scissors here and I attach the lace, it's not gonna really be great. I could either wait till I get home to do that bit or think of a way around it, and I don't know yet. But we'll see. I'm gonna sew the lace on and then I can trim away the extra. I have my first leg done and then I'm gonna use my measuring tape to make sure that where I'm placing my other leg is gonna be the same. So I'm just gonna measure on the side seam. So measuring this distance and then I'm just gonna create like the exact same thing for this leg and then they'll, they'll match up perfectly. We're gonna do the same, probably pinning it like there, I would say. 